School supply lists start to look a little bit different once you've entered an electrical engineering program. You've likely been handed a box or bag of spiky black and silver parts that look a little bit more like foe than friend, and that you suspect might be both easy to break and expensive to replace. The first is unfortunately kind of true, but you can always come to us when you need more of whatever you just melted. So what's in the scary bag? The least intimidating thing you've probably just been handed is called a solderless breadboard often just called a breadboard. It looks plastic, but it has little metal tabs beneath each one of these plastic sockets. The tabs are connected horizontally, but not vertically. So you can put wires or component leads across this way and they'll be connected, but not connected this way. You can connect them without soldering. If your board has power and ground like this one, these rails are connected all the way down, but not side to side and also not to each other. This positive is not connected to this, you would need a little jumper wire if you need both of those. Same thing with this division, actually. That is also not connected. You also probably have one of these. This is a basic soldering iron. The fact that you're basically required to own a rod capable of melting metal should definitely get you excited about your major. Your lab likely has some really nice temperature controlled stations. You can set temperature as well as set up a gradient. But a stick iron like this is just fine for working on your own. These are sometimes called fire starters for fairly obvious reasons. So keep these far, far away from papers and for the love of all that is flammable, keep it away from your hair. If you're like me and have bangs that fall out of place, even when you have a hair bend in, you definitely need to make sure scrunchies go on your school supply list. There is no better way to make sure your roommate hates you than to constantly fill a small dorm room with the smell of burning hair. So you know I love my LEDs, um, and I promise you will actually want a bunch of these in your toolkit. I use every color out there, but for a student on a budget, I would buy a bunch of these. They're five millimeter white LEDs. Every color has a slightly different forward voltage, so swapping colors mid-project makes you have to do more math. You have to find the right resistor all over again to limit the current going through your LED. With white ones, you always know that they're about 3.3 volts and um, you can color them with Sharpies or dry erase markers if you need to so you can get a different color without doing math. Save those brain cells for circuit theory and DiffEQ. Just so you know, when you go to buy them, I called them five millimeter because the diameter of the base is five millimeter. Their standard package name is T-1 and three quarters because reasons. The whole basis of our industry, the semiconductor industry, is that we can apply a small amount of power to an electronic switch and conduct a large amount of power. This is what one of these electronic switches look like. This is a BJT, or bipolar junction transistor, and applying current to one leg means you can apply proportionately larger current through the other two legs. There are two different kinds, PNP and NPN, you'll learn all about it, and Actually, the only difference is how it's doped. And that's not even a slang term. Doping is literally the term for the material properties that dictate how these devices function. Are they negative, positive, negative, or positive, negative, positive? You'll learn all about that, but you will explode some of these, just so you know. The last thing I wanna talk about is much more spiky black category than the others. This is a little 555 timer. The technical term is an integrated circuit, or IC, um, but one of my dear friends in a less technical role called it a spider once, which is completely appropriate. Um, they kind of look like little bugs. They often have eight legs. Specifically, this is called a dual inline package, or DIP, because it has two rolls or two rows of these little leads. You will also see things in surface mount packages, but when you go to do something for prototyping, you need something with leads that can stick into this. Like I said, this particular IC is a 555 timer. I don't know why it's called that. Um, it might be because the original design had three 5 kilo ohm resistors inside. It might be the guy that from Signetics really liked the number 555. Regardless, you will learn to love it. It outputs a square wave with a frequency you can define with external resistors and capacitors. And you can use that square wave to do all kinds of things like build a clock, let a microcontroller occasionally check on a sensor. You'll get to all that in class. But just a fun fact from me to you, most ICs have pin one marked with a dimple like this or a dot. Just be sure you check the data sheet because sometimes pin two is below pin one and sometimes it's right next to it. When you power on something with a chip in it for the first time, be sure you're using a benchtop power supply where you can limit the current. 
it'll definitely save you some blown up parts. I'll be doing more in-depth tutorials on all these basic school supplies in the coming days so you can hit the ground running. So definitely be sure to subscribe. If you have any specific questions about any of these five parts we talked about today, definitely leave me a comment and I'll try to get to it in the next video. Thanks for watching.